Hi guys, Robbie 46 here. Welcome yourselves back to MotoGP20 on the Xbox One X. We are going to talk about the Catalonia Grand Prix, which we had uh, yesterday at time of release of the video, or today at time of recording. Uh, we're going to be talking about all three categories, Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP. So if you haven't watched any of the racing, I would suggest going to watch it before you actually watch this video because there will be spoilers. But yeah, we are doing 100% race distance around here as Fabio Quattararo on the Patronus Yamaha. So then, the weekend kicked off with the news that Valentino Rossi has signed for Patronus Yamaha for 2021. He's got a one-year deal with the team. Um, I have put out a different video uh, going into that in more detail uh, if you want to check that out on the channel as well. But uh, yeah, we're going to start off with Moto3 in uh, Catalonia. And Moto3 is, uh, I say it every time, but it's just one of those races which you, you just can't take your eyes off it. It's action from start to finish. Uh, there's people chopping and changing pretty much every corner. It's just an absolute wild ride. And uh, yeah, the, the Catalonia was no different. It was a, a fantastic race. And uh, we got a, uh, a first-time winner in the category as well. So, uh, yeah, it was um, pretty much chopping and changing throughout the whole race. Uh, you had Darren Binder, who actually qualified pretty well for once. Usually, he qualifies quite far down. But then he manages to usually uh, get his way towards the front. Sometimes he ends up crashing. Other times, he ends up getting penalised for aggressive moves and that. Um... But yeah, he rode really well. He, he rode a little bit different to usual. You know, usually he's really, really aggressive. But he looked more like Brad on the bike this time, did Darren. He uh, he looked really good. He was He's always been strong on the brakes, just like his brother Brad. And uh, yeah, Darren Binder, he, he managed to take his first ever win in Moto3. Of course, he is signed for Patronus for 2021. So he'll be going on to into the Patronus team. Um, yeah, that's going to be a, a good step up for him because if he's now obviously got the monkey off his back that he's won a race, then he's going into a really strong team and, uh, you know, we could very well see him fighting for the title next season uh, if they're staying with the, the Hondas and obviously he'll have to get used to riding a Honda again. Obviously, he's on a KTM at the moment. But uh, I think that team will definitely bring out the best in, in Darren Binder next season. There was an incident... Um, between John McPhee and Albert Arenas um, McPhee actually went for an overtake to get up to uh, second place past Arenas got past him but almost ran into the back of Tony Arbolino who was leading at the time so uh, McPhee unfortunately had to put the front brake on a little bit harder than he wanted to whilst he was lent over he then lost the front Bearing in mind at the time he was ahead of Arena, as he'd just made the overtake. Um, and unfortunately, John lost the front, went down, and uh, Arena, who was slightly wide because obviously John had come through. Um, yeah, John's bike just went straight into Arena, and they both went down. So, two of the championship contenders down on the ground. Neither of them could uh, get back on and, and continue the race, so they were both completely out. Uh, John did later go go to the garage of Albert Arenas to apologise, but um, yeah, that that wasn't good for the championship. Um, well, good for it wasn't good for McPhee or Arenas either. Obviously, John didn't mean to do it. He just went for the overtake, uh, nearly went into the back of the leader, and uh, had to try and avoid him, but unfortunately lost the front. So uh, it's just one of those things that happens. Uh, but it was just unfortunate that Arenas was there on the outside and uh, John's bike took him out. So, uh, yeah, we had a good battle all the way through. And like I said, Darren Binder did take the win. Uh, Tony Arbolino, he rode a really good race and he ended up in second place. He nearly managed to get Binder to the line, but uh, he was just a tenth of a second short. So he ended up in second position. Completing the podium was Dennis Fodgett in third place for Leopard Racing. He had a really good race as well. And uh, he was only a tenth back from um, Arbolino as well. Uh, Sergio Garcia, the Estrella Galizia rider, came home in fourth place. You don't really see a lot from that team at the moment in Moto3. But um, 
Garcia definitely got, got a good result there in fourth position. Alonso Lopez as well. He's uh, he, he had a good race. He came home in fifth position. So uh, a really, really good job from him. Uh, the winner last time out, Romano Fanati, he came home in sixth. It wasn't looking good at one point for Fanati. He was quite far down. Um, but uh, he did end up finishing sixth just behind his teammate. Or he's over a second behind his teammate Lopez. But good for the Sterile Garden Max Racing team to uh, come home in fifth and sixth. Joan Messia, he came home in seventh position. Um, he did keep getting uh, beaten up slightly. Um, yeah, so seventh place for him. Vietti came home in eighth. Antonelli, ninth place for him. Uh, so back inside the top ten for Antonelli, which is good to see. Rodrigo was tenth. Ayogura, who... Again, he, he was second place in the championship before Catalonia. Uh, just a few points behind Arenas. He couldn't really capitalise on the fact that his two main rivals had gone out of the race. Agura didn't get a good start and he was struggling throughout pretty much the whole race. He was outside the points for at least a quarter of the race. He was struggling down in 16th place. Um, then managed to get inside the points. But didn't really... You know, grab the opportunity with both hands. Um, obviously, at the start of the race, he wouldn't have known what was going to happen between McPhee and Arenas. But he did get signal on his pit board that uh, they were both out. And that, uh, you know, he, he needed to push to, to gain some points. Because if he got enough points, he would then go on to win the race. Uh, not to win the race, but lead the championship, sorry. Um, which is, you know... If two of your main title rivals go down, you need to capitalise on that. And uh, he kind of did, but he kind of didn't. It, it wasn't the best of results for Agura, who has been really consistent this season, but outside the top 10 this time. Salach came home in 12th place. Uh, then you had Fernandez in 13th. Not really the best result for Fernandez after qualifying well. Uh, Nepa came home in 14th, and Yamanaka was 15th, the last point scorer. And then 16th, you had Barry Boltus. Um, Sasaki in the 17th. Toba, 18th. Alcoba, 19th. Uh, Ricardo Rossi, 20th. Yuki Kuni, 21st. Uh, Tupasquire in 22nd. Koffler, 23rd. And Powie in 24th. Now, a few of them did have to do the long lap penalty as well throughout the race. Um, the, lot, the long lap around Catalonia is... A bit of a weird one because generally at most of the tracks it's about three seconds so it is if you do the long lap penalty you basically got a three second penalty but the, where it is at Catalonia is basically the outside of turn one and then the outside of some of turn well outside of turn one straight across to turn two and then you come back on track so they reckon it's about five seconds for Catalonia which is obviously quite harsh, but it is what it is. Obviously, with the uh, track extending penalty, they they basically get five chances now. Uh, they, they've kind of made it across the board. You get five chances. You get a warning after three, and then you get another warning, and then you do it a fifth time, and that's a uh, long lap penalty. So uh, it's good that they've actually kind of got a base for it now because before it was three um but it was a little bit inconsistent and now they've gone to five but they seem to let the riders get away with lap one so you do often see quite a few riders going going off tracker uh, on lap one we saw it in pretty much all classes at uh, austria especially through turn one a lot of them were just going completely off track um, to the left of the track which is like basically the exit of turn one but then carry on and accelerating but um, race direction doesn't seem to penalize uh, lap one infringements but um, yeah after lap one then obviously they start looking at people more closely uh, we had quite a few DNFs uh, Andre Migno he ran off and then he retired so yeah, it wasn't a good day for him. 
Carlos Tate, he uh, ended up um, having a crash, as did uh, Pizzoli. Dennis Onchu had a crash as well. Um, he had a coming together with Jose Julian uh, Garcia. And then, obviously, you had John McPhee crashing and uh, taking out Albert Arenas. So, uh, yeah, that was Moto3. But the overall standings now, like I said, with Arenas and McPhee not scoring, Agura only getting uh, 11th place. Agura now leads the championship, but not by much. He only leads by three points. So although Arenas obviously, you know, understandably wasn't happy with what had happened, he only lost a few points overall, and he's only three points behind Agura at the moment. So um, they'll go on to the next race, which is Le Mans. They'll obviously reset, and uh, they'll get going again. But yeah, uh, Arenas is uh, now second place in the championship, three points behind Agura. John McPhee, he is 24 points behind Agura. Uh, still only 21 behind Arenas. But he's still only, you know, less than a whole race wins worth of points behind the leader. Then you've got Tony Arbolino, who has moved up to fourth in the championship. Now he's 27 points behind. Vietti is fifth, 28 points behind. So it's basically between the top five at the moment. And then we get some bigger gaps as we go further down. So sixth place is Suzuki, who obviously wasn't there this weekend. He was um, replaced by Jose Julian uh, Garcia uh, because obviously Suzuki is injured. So he's dropped down to sixth place. Now he's 47 points behind. Uh, Messia is uh, he's actually moved up to seventh place, but he's 52 points behind. Rodrigo is dropped a position down to 8th, he's 53 points behind, and uh, Fernandez in ninth is 58 points behind. So yeah, it's looking like it's going to be a 5-way battle at the moment for the championship, but we'll have to wait and see what actually happens at uh, Le Mans, which will be uh, in a couple of weekends' time. Moto2. It was... Uh, that was a good race as well, actually. It, it was, you know, looking like a pretty standard Moto2 race, but... Uh, it did boil up to, to quite a nice race. Uh, he had a few people very unlucky. Again, quite a few crashes and uh, DNFs. But, um, yeah, Luca Marini, he done what he needed to do. He went out to win the race, but he was pushed all the way by Sam Lowe's. Uh, Sam Lowe's, who, who qualified on the front row, didn't get the best of starts. Sam doesn't generally get decent starts in Moto2. Um, so he dropped back to about 5th or 6th place off the line. But he did manage to fight his way back. He was setting fastest lap after fastest lap. And uh, started picking people off one by one. Um, he managed to put a move on Digi Antonio a bit later on in the race. To get up to 2nd. However, he had a bit of a moment on the brakes. Uh, luckily, Digi managed to... Uh, he pretty much saw what was going to happen. Picked his bike up, let Lowe's run through, but ran wide. And then Digi managed to cut back underneath. Lowe's did then later uh, get back in front of Digi and then start to gap him. Um, there was a, a bit of a gap from Marini back to Lowe's at that point. by It was, it was roughly about a second. And uh, Lowe's started banging in the fastest laps after fastest laps. Managed to catch Marini. He did get past him. But literally, with two races, two laps to go, Lowe's had uh, pretty much burnt up his rear tyre. Marini had a bit more grip. And yeah, two laps to go, Marini managed to get back in front of Lowe's and uh, go on to take the victory. So, a fantastic win for Marini. he done what he needed to do to, to try and obviously extend his lead in the championship. Um, Sam Lowe's, fantastic result for him, second position. Uh, Digi Antonio getting the uh, the speed up on the podium in fourth place. Then we had uh, his teammate Jorge Navarro on the other speed up take home fourth place. So uh, good race for the speed ups. But we know know that the speed ups work around uh, Catalonia. They've had good results there in the past. Joe Roberts back on form. He took home fifth position. Uh, Enya Bastianini didn't have uh, the best of races for him. He ended up in 6th position, so losing quite a few points on Marini, as did Bezecchi. Marco Bezecchi 
came home in 7th place. Aaron Canet, the rookie, was 8th. Then you had Marcos Ramirez in 9th. Marcel Schrotter, 10th. Thomas Luti in 11th. Nagashima, obviously he won the first race of the season at Qatar. He was down in 12th place. Hector Garzo got some points in 13th. Edgar Pons in 14th. And Simone Corsi took home 15th place. Remy Gardner was in the points, but he unfortunately got a uh, long lap penalty and that put him outside the points, so he ended up down in 16th. Bo Ben Snyder was 17th. Siren 18th. Um, Isdai Ha ended up in 19th. Kasma Daniel in 20th. And the guy whose name I cannot pronounce was 21st. B. Sekariski. I think, but we had, uh, like I said, quite a few DNFs. We had uh, Stefano Manzi and Dalla Porta having a coming together. They both went out, both went down. Um, Bulliger got a DNF as well. Jake Dixon, oh, he was so unlucky. Jake, he's, he's been going well the last few rounds. He's uh, starting to kind of get to grips with a Moto2 machine now. Um, and obviously he's got trust in his team, which he didn't have last season. Uh, the team have got trust in Jake. And he was he was doing well. He's in about sixth position. Then he had a mechanical failure. So not good for Jake, unfortunately. But he was looking really strong. And uh, yeah, just really, really unfortunate for him. Hopefully he can uh, bounce back at Le Mans and uh, start showing more of that... Uh, you know, what what we uh, are hoping to see a bit more of Jake. But um, yeah, we'll have to wait till Le Mans now. Yeah, hey, unfortunately, Jake's uh, teammate, he ended up having a crash. Quite a fast crash as well, actually. Um, yeah, he managed to, uh, unfortunately, crash out with 15 laps to go. Well, hey, Martin, he actually ended up retiring from the race. He didn't crash, he just ended up retiring. Um, obviously, he was back after missing the last two rounds. Chantra ran off track and then ended up having a crash a bit later on. So not a great race for Chantra. Augusto Fernandez, the man was literally on fire in morning warm-up. His bike caught fire and he had to uh, jump off it. He managed to slow it pretty much right down, but then he had to jump off it and pat himself down. Um, unfortunately, he ended up crashing out of the race in uh, yeah two laps to go, actually. So not good for him. And Lorenzo Baldessari, just, it's not happening for Baldessari at the moment. He uh, just can't seem to, to get decent results at the moment. And he had a DNF as well. And he crashed out with uh, one lap to go. So uh, not good for him. Championship wise, Luca Marini extends his lead. He's on 150 points. He now has a 20 point lead over the Beast, Bastianini in second. So not quite a race wins worth over second place, but uh, it is getting that way. And Luca Marini is riding really well at the moment. So he's uh, going to keep building on that. Uh, Marco Bezzecchi took, uh, well, he's, he's still in third in the championship, but he's 36 points behind now. Um, so he's he's got work to do, but uh, it looks like he's going to struggle to catch Marini, but you never know what can happen. Sam Lowe's, he is back in fourth place on 103 points, 47 points behind Marini. Going to be really, really difficult for Sam to, to close that gap down. Jorge Martin, he is still in fifth, but uh, yeah, he's 71 points behind. Nagashima is 78 points behind. Aaron Kanet has moved up to seventh in the championship, uh, 89 points behind. Vieje has dropped down to eighth, he's 91 points behind. And Thomas Luti in ninth is 93 points behind. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens at uh, Le Mans to see what happens uh, with the championship there. But um, it's looking good for uh, Marini at the moment. He definitely has the momentum in his favour. And, uh, yeah, he's definitely the one to beat at the moment. So we'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, I think he's going to be definitely the favourite to win the championship at the moment. So... Yeah, we will uh, wait till Le Mans and see what happens there. But over to MotoGP now. It was an all Yamaha front row, which uh, is uh, you know a rarity. And uh, 
you know, we're kind of thinking maybe we're going to get an all Yamaha podium as well. Uh, the top five guys had a really good race pace throughout the whole weekend, uh, including Rossi. And uh, yeah, it was shaping up to be a cracking race. But off the start into turn two, Daniello Petrucci had a bit of a moment through turn two, which caused Johan Zarco to, to put his front brake on a little bit more whilst lent over to try and avoid Petrucci. Unfortunately, that ended up losing the front for Zarco and crashing out. And then when he crashed out, he went straight into Andrea De Vizioso and took Dovi out as well. So uh, Dovi ended up having a DNF, as did uh, Zarco, both on lap one. Dovi was not happy, but unfortunately, it, it wasn't Zarco's fault, you know. It was just one of those things. The rider in front had, uh, had a moment. Zarco tried to avoid going into him and unfortunately ended up losing the front in the process and going down. So, uh, yeah, you have three Ducatis involved in that incident. And, uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say that I don't think uh, De is going to win the championship this year, which is unfortunate for him because, obviously, he's uh, not got a, a ride for next year. So, it's just one of those things, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, he's, he's definitely uh, languishing in the points now. It was uh, Morbidelli who actually led the race for a little bit to begin with. He was uh, closely followed by Rossi. And uh, you had the likes of uh, Jack Miller and Fabio Quattararo trying to close them down. Um, a bit further down, yeah, Crutchlow, he was back. Crutchlow had a bit of a weird thing happen to him on Friday because obviously all the riders, they've got to have the, uh, the virus test at the moment. He had his test and then basically slipped as he came out of the medical center and damaged some ligaments in his ankle and his ankle was uh well it, it, it was swollen quite badly throughout the, the weekend he's obviously just come back from injury anyway after having arm pump surgery and yeah it's uh, <laughs> just just going from bad to worse for crutch at the moment but he was back and it was good to see uh, he had a couple of crashes throughout like free practice and that but Luckily, he didn't re-injure himself or anything and managed to uh, to go out and uh, put together a pretty decent race for him. Um, Bangyaya was... Yeah, you know, I was expecting a little bit more from Bangyaya this weekend, but unfortunately, didn't quite work that way. Uh, Jack Miller, he was having a good race uh, at the beginning, but we seem to have the kind of similar thing that happened with Jack at the moment. You know, he's, he's pretty quick to begin with, and then... He kind of starts fading once the tyres start going off. Uh, lucky for him though, he didn't have uh, any a tear off pickup this time, which he suffered at Mazzano, where his bike picked up a uh, one of Quattararo's tear offs, and uh, yeah, he had to unfortunately retire from the race because uh, the tear off caused a mechanical issue. So uh, yeah, he he did actually have the the tear off. Um, taped to uh, the inside of his uh, his garage which was quite funny to see you could see it basically next to where Miller was sitting in the garage uh, you had the the tear off of Quattaro just stuck to the side so that was quite funny to see Maverick Vinales he qualified on the second row but by turn three he was he was way down he'd, he'd lost 11 places off the start which is crazy he was outside the points and uh, it just it just makes you wonder about Vinales. it's you know he, he won the previous race but now you go to the next race and he struggles it's it seems to be the same thing with Vinales. like he it, we know he's not very good good at starts but late on in the race he's not one of the fastest guys out there but obviously it's too late by then he can't seem to get going on a bike with a full Full fuel tank. He uh, struggles with it, and uh, yeah, he definitely suffers. And the other guys make him pay for that. That's for sure. Like I said, he was outside the points for quite a while, um, and yeah, it wasn't looking good for him. Bearing in mind, he's, he's meant to be trying to fight for the, the championship at the moment, but just uh, wasn't happening for him. Joan May, he uh, he was my tip for the weekend. Actually, I was uh, I actually predicted on Twitter that. Uh, Mir would leave Catalonia 
um, leading the championship. I was wrong. But, um, I mean, it nearly happened, but not quite. Alex Rins as well. We seem to have a resurgence from Alex Rins. Obviously, he's, he's still not 100% fit. So, um, it was good to see him, you know, get get going later on in the race and uh, start picking up positions because the last couple of races he's, he's not been, you know, where he should be. But, um, yeah, Quattararo managed to, to get past uh, Morbidelli. Um, Rossi, unfortunately... He was in second place. He, he was keeping in touch with Morbidelli, but nine laps to go. He, uh, unfortunately, crashed through turn two. And we've seen quite a few crashes through turn two over the weekend. So, on screen, we're going into turn one now. Turn two is this left-hander here. And the front just washed out without any warning. Just completely went. Um, in the past, we don't, we haven't really seen many people crash there in the past. But this weekend, we have seen quite a few crash there. And it's, uh, it's just one of the, those crashes where they get no warning whatsoever. The, the front just tucks and that's it. No chance of saving it. And yeah, it was unfortunate for Rossi because he, he was looking good in second position, like I said. Uh, Morbidelli was just starting to break away from him a little bit. Um, no, actually, it was uh, Quattararo, sorry, who was actually in the lead. Morbidelli was second, but Morbidelli had one hair, well, two two massive moments down into turn one uh, he locked up on the brakes his uh, bike snapped sideways so he had to release the, the front brake a bit to, to get the bike back in line and then it obviously he was going into turn one a little bit too hot he tipped in and pretty much lost the front but managed to save it um, and that allowed Rossi through into second and uh, Quattararo in, uh, into the lead Quattararo he was uh, I think it's it about 0.6, maybe 0.9 the second back to Rossi. But um, yeah, unfortunately Rossi crashed uh, with nine laps to go into turn two. No chance of saving it. And that's uh, two crashes in the road for Rossi, unfortunately. And the, Rossi obviously chasing that 200th podium at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's, it's still not coming. He obviously had that crash at Mazzano, the, the second race at Mazzano. And uh, he was, you know, due for a podium hit at Catalonia. But then we don't know what would have happened with the tyres because tyres did come into it. And uh, some riders just ended up dropping back. I mean, Morbidelli, unfortunately, did end up uh, dropping back a little bit. The two Suzuki's managed to get the better of Morbidelli towards the end of the race. Just because they, they had a, a better condition rear tyre. And uh, yeah, it was... Um, both the Suzuki's managed to get past him. Uh, Paul Spargro as well. Unfortunately for him, with 12 laps to go, he ended up crashing as well. Um, he was fighting with Petrucci for quite a while. And then he literally just got in front of Petrucci, down into Turn 1. And just lost the front. He uh, lost the front into Turn 1, crashed out. And that was his race over. And Miguel Oliveira, he ended up crashing out with 6 laps to go. So, uh, yeah, we ended up having five people, five riders DNF in. But it was uh, Fabio Quattararo who managed to take the victory. And uh, obviously that's three wins for Quattararo now. Four wins for Patronus Yamaha. And it kind of looks like Quattararo may just be starting to, uh, you know, get to the grips with the title. And, you know... We've been waiting for someone to, to basically grab the ball by the horn, so to speak, and uh, take control of the championship. And now with three wins to his name, it's looking like Quattararo might just be the one to do that. Obviously, his home race next time out at Le Mans. So, I mean, the, the Yamahas tend to go well there. So, yeah, I'm expecting more good things from Quattararo at Le Mans. But, um, yeah, good stuff from Fabio. He was in tears on the podium. I think he knows that, you know, the last few rounds have not been great for him. But, um, yeah, he's back on top. Uh, Joanne Mir, he did come home in second position. So my prediction was nearly right, but not quite. But, uh, yeah, he ended up 0.9 behind Quattro at the end. Which is uh, quite interesting because Quattro had about a two-second lead. But within the last three laps, the lead just started collapsing the rear tyre of Quattro. A bit like what's happening to me in this race. The rear tyre just completely went. 
and uh, Quattararo's times were lap times were, were coming down and uh, Mir just had a, a, a little bit better grip in the rear tyre and closing that gap down but uh, I think if uh, they had had another two, two, maybe three laps left, I think Mir would have got him. But uh, yeah, Quattararo had just enough of a gap. So yeah, Quattararo won with Mir in second place. Alex Rins, like I said, back to back to form for uh, Alex Rins. He came home in third position. Um, so yeah, good to see Rins back on the podium. Both Suzuki's on the podium as well. I can't remember the last time we had two Suzuki's on the podium. I know they were mentioning that um, at the time as well. But I don't know if they actually ever said um, when the last time we had two Suzuki's on the podium was. Probably quite a long time ago, that's for sure. Uh, Franco Morbidelli, he dropped back behind the two Suzuki's and ended up in fourth position. Um, about half a second behind him was Jack Miller. So uh, Jack Miller getting a, a decent result in there in fifth. Bangyaya came home in sixth, so just behind his teammate. Um, literally just two temps behind Jack, actually. And uh, we've seen Bangyaya, you know, seem to be the, the quicker one out of the two Pramac guys at the moment. But uh, Jack managed to uh, kind of re restamp re his authority to, uh, to Bangyaya. But... Uh, Obviously, it's only the one race at the moment. Uh, Nakagami, the top Honda, he came home in seventh position. Uh, he was actually with the two Pramac bikes right behind him. He only finished a tenth back from Banyaya. But uh, it is good to see Nakagami. Um, you know, he is getting some, some solid results. He's definitely changed his riding style to kind of match Marquez's a little bit more. And yeah, he's, he's just doing a good job at the moment because, you know, that Honda is a bit of a pig to ride by the sounds of it. And uh, the only one who can ride it and the only one who's been able to ride it for the past God knows how many years has been Marquez. So, hats off to Nakagami there. Danilo Petrucci, a, a slightly better round for him. Eighth position inside the top ten. We haven't really seen much of Petrucci at all this season. It's been a, a very quiet season for Petrucci. A bit disappointing as well. Obviously, he's off to Tech 3 KTM next season. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good to see him back in the points. Uh, Maverick Vinales, ninth place. Which is somewhat of a comeback. Not much. Um... I guess he just tried to do damage limitation. He, he, he did have very quick pace once the, the fuel levels went down. But like I said, he was in 16th place at one point and uh, fighting with Crutchlow as well for, for 10th place. And he did manage to beat Crutchlow uh, to 9th. Uh, Crutchlow ended up in 10th place, which is a, a pretty solid result returning from injury and still injured. and. You know, injured, injured himself even more before the actual weekend started. So, good 10th place for him. Brad Binder came home in 11th place. Wasn't really a great day for KTM. Uh, Alicia Spargaro, 12th place. Uh, good to see the Aprilia finishing. Alex Marquez came home in 13th. Ika Laquona, 14th. And Tito Rabat got that final point in 15th place. Then you had Bradley Smith, 16th, and Stefan Bradl in uh, 17th place. So, Repsol Honda, their misery con continues. Their uh, podiumless streak continues. Uh, they've, they've never gone this long without getting a podium before. And it just goes to show that they are relying on Mark Marquez a little bit too much at the moment. And uh, it's not paying off, so... It will be interesting to see which way Honda go with their development because they d they don't have Marquez there, you know, to give any feedback at the moment. They've just got obviously the riders they've got at the moment: Nakagami, Crutchlow, um, Alex Marquez, and Stefan Bradl. So whether they're going to wait for Marquez to come back and then try and get them to develop the Honda still, or if they're going to, you know, go, go to they, they should really go to all the riders and kind of try and get that feedback and uh, go with the majority and uh, 
try and find a fix so that other riders can in fact ride that Honda. It will be interesting to see how Polar Spargo goes on it next season. He's, he's got quite an aggressive style as well. So, um, yeah, it will be interesting to see how he goes. But, you know, at the same time, has he made a mistake switching from the KTM, which, you know, seems to be quite a decent bike now. I mean, it's won a race this season. It's won two races this season. And now he's going on to a Honda, which uh, obviously isn't the most uh, rider-friendly of bikes. So, yeah, just uh, going through the uh, DNFs again. So, Miguel Oliveira, Valentino Rossi, Paula Spargro, Johan Zarco, and Andrea De Vizioso all DNFing in the race. Now, what's that done to the championship? So, like I said, with Quattararo winning his third race of the season, he's kind of uh, starting to gain control a little bit of the championship because he is uh, on 108 eight points now, uh, leading the championship. Joanne Mayer has moved up two positions to second place. He's still only eight points behind, so Mayer is definitely not out of it. Um, and, you know, my prediction was, was wrong, but... You know, it wasn't too far off. Only eight points behind. Nearly leading the championship, but not quite. But, you know, Mir is being super consistent at the moment. He is like a podium threat almost every weekend now, which is, you know, championship material. So he just needs to, to get that win, which obviously he would have had at uh, the Red Bull ring if uh, the, the race hadn't been red flagged. But, you know, that win is coming. Maverick Vinales, despite a, uh, a bad day at the office, he's still in third, but he's 18 points behind Quattararo now. So, still got some work to do. But, you know, as we've seen this season, it is so unpredictable that literally anything can happen. And it probably will. So, you know, 18 points may seem like a big gap, but not necessarily. Um, he just needs to try and sort his starts out and... Uh, just try and be more consistent so that dnf has dropped davizioso three positions now he has uh, dropped down to fourth place he's 24 points behind which is still not quite a whole race wins worth so again not out of it um still got time to try and close back down we'll have to wait and see um more Bidelli. He is over a whole race wins worth of points behind. Now, he's fifth, 31 points behind. So, it's going to be a bit more difficult from fifth downwards in the championship to, you know, be able to fight for the championship. It's, you know, top four are separated by 24 points. Top nine are now separated by 49. So, uh, those gaps uh, are definitely going up. Um, so, yeah, Morbidelli fifth. Jack Miller, he is in sixth. He's only two points behind Morbidelli now. Uh, so he's uh, 33 points behind. Nakagami in seventh. He is only an extra three points behind Miller and five points behind Morbidelli. So uh, Nakagami sits there in seventh place. Alex Rins with that uh, podium, third place, jumps up four positions. And now he's back inside the top 10 in 8th place, but he's 48 points behind. One point ahead of Miguel Oliveira, who has dropped down to 9th now after crashing out of the race. He is 49 points behind, so... The championship is far from over. we got, what, 6 races left to go. Um, and they are at 4 tracks. So we've got... Um, Le Mans coming up next. Quattararo's home race. Zarco's home race. Then we go to Aragon twice, uh, which, you know, the Ducatis should go well there. Then we go to Valencia twice, which, you know, Valencia isn't the best of circuits anyway. Um, but hopefully we'll get some good racing there. And then we go to uh, Porto Mayo for the final round. So we're going to be ending, obviously, at a track where none of these guys have raced before. So that will be interesting to see. Um, so yeah, six races left, four different tracks, you know, it could be anyone's game. And the thing that we've seen as well is when it's, you know, they've got two races at the same track, it's completely different, the results. 
um, you get some some riders that really thrive from you know having all that extra data when usually they have to wait a whole year to use that data at the same track uh, the following season this season they haven't got to do that with some of the tracks because you know they do one race there and then the next weekend they're back there again they've got all that data and they can just uh, try and uh, you know try and tweak the settings to uh, to try and uh, get the win overall or get a better position and we have seen that you know at uh, a few other tracks we've been to twice but yeah that is uh, how it stands at the moment so Quattararo leads the championship as we go to Le Mans which will be the next round but anyway guys that is it from me thank you so much for watching don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it subscribe to my channel for more content I shall see you guys in the next video don't forget to stay safe and to wash your hands see you